Shalom, brothers united in Christ. We're picking back up a lesson we started a few weeks ago in um, 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra 3. Brother over here, pick it up from, um, pick it up from, pick it up from the 12th verse. Over here, you give me that. Give me what you got, bro. Second Ezra 3 and 12. And it happened that when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten to many children and were a great people, they began again to be more unpowerly than the first. Right? Let me get on. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me get Deuteronomy 32. See, this is the problem. Like, it's saying that as people on the earth started to grow, multiply started doing good. They started, you know, living off the fat of the earth. They started drinking wine and making babies and all this stuff that they started getting wild. They started getting reckless, right? And as we was going through this chapter, we, we went through Adam, how in his time, he was the man. Out of all the people on the earth, the Lord was only dealing with Adam. which only showed Adam all his commandments and his laws and his statute. And then it passed down to Noah. In the earth at that time, Noah was the only one that the Lord was dealing with. And he showed him all his commandments, his laws, and the statutes of righteousness. And... To me, most people would agree with that. Most people would agree that, that Adam in his time was the only righteous man. Noah was the righteous man in his time. Abraham was the righteous man at that time. Most people, they won't argue with that. But the fact of the matter is that covenant, that promise, it got passed down to us, to the children of Israel. Because after it went to Abraham, it went to Isaac. And after it went to Isaac, it went to Jacob, right? And the children of Jacob are your so-called Negroes, Hispanics, people of um, Indian descent that's, that went through the hard captivity and the slavery, right? Deuteronomy 32 and 15. But Jeshurun wax fat and kick. Yeah, Jeshurun wax fat. Jeshurun is a spiritual name for Israel. He said that we wax fat. Like how they say in the earth today, I'm living fat, or I'm living good, or I got a lot. You know what I mean? The Lord said we wax fat as a nation of people, right? We don't. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art growing thick. Right? Thou art covered with fatness. Then he was sick to Excuse me. Then he forsook the most high which made him. Yeah, we see that still in the earth. You give a Negro some money, you give him some prestige and all these things, and it's like they forget where they came from. You know what I mean? A lot of them, you know, they might even marry a, a white woman or move out of the neighborhood and these things, but they forget where they came from. They forget the Lord, right? Read on. Then he forsook the most high which made him, and lightly and stained the rock of his salvation. Yeah, people, they lightly esteem the Lord. They don't give the Lord no props, man. All the stuff that he do for us. Like the scripture he brought out, we say, oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for all his wonderful works that he do to the children of men. But nobody's praising the Lord. The Lord continually is blessing us and giving to us, but nobody's is trying to, to break off and, and serve the Lord, right? Pick it up, pick it back up where you had to read down. Second Ezra, oh, yeah, okay. three and 13. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, Thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Yeah, so Abraham in his time, he was the one. He was the one that was walking with the Lord, and the Lord showed him all his wisdom, all his understanding, all his knowledge, right? Let me get, um, hold that, let me get Genesis 12 and 1. So it shouldn't be a hard thing. If we look through this Bible, the Lord always was choosing. He always had his chosen. He always had the person that he was dealing with, even though the rest of the world was wicked and nobody saw the Lord. He always had his people, you know, his, his chosen, right? Read on. Genesis 12 and 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Yeah, so the Lord told him to leave all that stuff, leave all that madness, 
leave all that confusion and come follow me and learn, and learn the ways of righteousness, right? Read on. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Yeah, this came to pass, because Abraham's name is big in the earth. All the three major religions, they all confess Abraham. They all say Abraham was the one. They say that Abraham was the one, right? Read on. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Right. And I will bless them that bless thee, right. and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So the Lord said, everybody on the earth, all the families of the whole world, was going to be blessed through this one man, Abraham. He was going to be blessed through Abraham. And this is the same blessing that came down to us as a nation of people. Those that bless us, they're going to be blessed. And those that curse us, they're going to be cursed. Because this is the blessing that the Lord gave to Abraham that passed down, right? Now come back to what you want. Come back to what you This is 2nd Andrews 3 and 13. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, right. whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. So it was a separation. It was only him at that point in time that knew the Lord. Just like when the Lord was dealing with us, and that blessing got passed down to us, it was only the Lord was only dealing with the nation of Israel. It shouldn't be so hard to believe. It shouldn't be that hard to understand. Or you shouldn't feel no kind of way about that or feel like it's a racist zone or it's a prejudice zone because all this stuff was written before any of us even came into the earth. All these stuff was already established. All these promises was already made and locked in. So now you can't come up and speak against this. This is what the Lord set up, right? Read on. And made, and made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Right. And unto him, Stop. that's good. And the Lord, he made a promise saying, he's never going to forsake his seed. So this, this blessing that keep passing down and pass down, and the Lord said, it's not going to stop. He's never going to forsake him. He's never going to forget us, right? Read what you got. Acts 7 and 1. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The power of glory appeared unto our father Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and he said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Yeah, example of faith. The brother, he didn't know where he was going. He was walking through the wilderness. He was walking through the desert. He left everything he grew up in, everything he knew, and he believed. He followed the Lord and believed. He never looked back. He just kept moving and walking with the Lord, right? Read on. Acts 7 and 4. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed them into this land wherein he now dwelt. Let's talk about that, that land that's filled with milk and honey that the Lord took from the Canaanites and he gave to us, right? For the Lord felt we were more acceptable. I mean, quiet is kept. When we go through the scriptures, we see the Lord, he made the earth for our sakes. The whole earth was made for the nation of Israel. So it's nothing that he took the land from the Africans and gave it to us because this whole zone is ours through the Lord. Right? Read on. Verse 5. And, and he gave him none inheritance in it. Right? No, not so much as to set his foot on. Right? Yet he promised that he would give it to him for, for a possession and to a seed after him. Yeah, so Abraham himself, he never got a possession in the promised land. But like we just read in uh, the Genesis 12, it was going to pass down to his children. That same blessing, those same promises, that same covenant, right? Read on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. Right, read on. And the most I speak on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. Yeah, he's talking about he's talking about the captivity that the children of Israel went through in Egypt for 400 years. They, they, they treated us evil, right? And they treated us bad, right? But this is the seed of the Lord, right? And the Most High spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage 
and to treat them evil for 400 years. That's what happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. But that's the same type of zone we're going through now in America. Because America's been treated as evil since we first came here. So today, they still was killing us off. We came here, they was hanging us originally, poisoning us. Today, they shooting us down. The police, they gunning us down. But it's, it's the same comparison. We've been in, uh, in America for a little bit over 400 years, but, but the Lord is going to deliver us out of America the same way, in the same similar way that he delivered us out of Egypt with miracles and with wonders. Right? Read on. Acts 7 and 7. In the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said the Most High. Same thing. Same thing with Egypt, how, how it's going to be with America. When the Lord do deliver us out of America, he's going to judge America for all the evil that they did to us, for all the um, evil and treatments. Let me get over here. Let me get, let me get Ecclesiastic is 10 and 8. 10 and 8. Hold that. Look, give me Ecclesiastic is 10 and 8. Right? Because the whole, the whole time we've been here, we've been treated evil from beginning till now. Right? This is Ecclesiastic is 10 and 8. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So this is how the Lord destroyed one kingdom and set up another kingdom. Because they deal un unrighteously. They got unrighteous dealings. America dealt unrighteously with us since we've been here, right? They dealt unrighteously. They make us, we got to work 10 times harder just to get by in America. We don't got... You know, fathers that got rich off of the slavery and passed that money down, all these big companies, all these Procter and Gambles, Johnson and Johnson, all these companies became filthy rich over slavery. And they pass it down to their children and they stay rich. Whereas us, we gotta work, we gotta work hard. And they treat us and they deal with us evilly. They don't deal with us justly, right? Because of unrighteous dealings and injuries. Ever since we got here in America, they've been beating us up. They've been jacking us up physically. Physically and treating us evil, right? And rich is gotten by the sea. That's how this country was set up. They, they tricked the so-called um, Indian. They called them Indian, but we know them as Gadites. They tricked them out of their, their land. They gave them smallpox and disease and killed them off, and they take their whole land. This is richest guy by the sea, right? Read that verse again. This is Ecclesiasticus 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, right. injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, right. the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And America is guilty of all three of those. So because of those things, the Lord is going to translate that kingdom unto a more righteous people. Right? That's going to deal more righteously, right? Read that seventh verse again. Acts 7 and 7. And, excuse me, Acts 7 and 7. In the nation to whom they shall be in bondage, will I judge, said the Most High. And after that, shall they come forth and serve me in this place. Same thing like Egypt. When the Lord takes us out of America, he's going to do it with wonderful works and powerful signs, and he's going to bring us back into our land, in uh, the promised land, the land of Jerusalem. The same thing like when we came out of Egypt, he brought us into that promised land. Right, read on. Acts 7 and 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat... Jacob, and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs. Okay, so Abraham gave the blessing down to Isaac. The blessing went from Isaac, then they went to Jacob, and then Jacob had 12 sons, the 12 patriarchs, right? Judah, being the so-called Negroes. Benjamin, being the people over there in the West Indies. Levi, being the Haitians. Simeon, being you so-called Dominicans. Zebulon, being Guatemala, Panama. Ephraim, being the Puerto Ricans. Manasseh, being the Cubans. Gad, being the North American Indians. Reuben being the Seminole Indians, Naphtali being Argentina to Chile, Asher being Colombia to Uruguay, and Issachar being you Mexicans. These are the 12 children that Jacob had, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that Noah had, and the blessing that Adam had, it was passed down to them, right? Now pick it up what you got, the Hebrews 8. Hebrews 11 and 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. It's reiterating what the brother just read in Acts, how this brother, he moved on faith. He didn't know where he was going. He was going through a wilderness. He was going through a desert. 
it was danger, it was darkness, but he believed in the Lord, and the Lord guided him. So he's always going to be the example of faith, but the father of faith. Right, Peter? By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same promise. So the Lord said he was dwell in tents with Jacob and with Isaac. So he was the only one that had the knowledge was Abraham. So you didn't think he taught his sons? He didn't think the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that the Lord gave Abraham? He didn't teach to his son and his grandson, to Isaac and Jacob, that was dwelling in the same tents with him, and that, that became his heirs of that same promise and of that same covenant. That's how the Lord passed it down, right? We don't. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is the Most High. Through faith also, Sarah herself. Yeah. So the brother, he was looking for a spiritual life. He left all the wickedness of his father's house, and he was looking for a city. That, that the, the builder was the most high. He was looking for righteousness. He was tied to all that carnal stuff, right? So he moved with the Lord. He was walking with the Lord, right? Read on. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Yeah, Sarah received strength because at first she was laughing. She didn't believe in her old age that she was going to be able to have a baby. But then Abraham, between Abraham and, and Sarah, they had so many children that you couldn't number them like the multitude of stars in the sky. And you couldn't number them like it was the sand, like the grains of sand on the shore. It was that many of them that came out of Abraham, right? Because he was the father of many nations. And all families of the earth were blessed through Abraham. It was only through Abraham all families of the earth were blessed. And that same blessing is passed down to you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and you of Indian descent that went through the hard captivity and the hard slavery, right? You are the children of Abraham, right? You know what? Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand, excuse me, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Yeah, it said he was as dead because he was he was old. He was old, like a hundred a hundred years old. So he said as one is dead, sprang all these children, right? Read on. There, me, these all died in faith, right? Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Waited up them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Yeah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they didn't see all the promises come to pass. They didn't see all the blessings passed down to their seed, but they saw the far off the belief. They believed all the things that the Lord said he was going to do, right? I mean, they confessed that we're just strangers and we're just pilgrims in the earth. We don't know nothing. We're only on this earth for like 18 years. We're on this earth for, what, 50 years, 30 years, 80 years. The man act like he knows something. We don't know anything. We're just pilgrims and sojourners and strangers in the earth. If we want to get to know something, we got to get to know the Lord. Because it's the Lord that got this history. He, got, he gave us knowledge of what's going to happen now. And he got prophecies that was coming down the line. Right? Read on. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. Yeah, so they say these brothers, they're seeking a more righteous life, a more spiritual life. If they wanted to, we could have said, the Lord got me out here in the desert, walking around, I don't know where I'm going. Look, I'm going back to my father's house. I'm going back to what I knew. But the brother didn't do that. That's like what Lot's wife did. The Lord delivered him out of a city of homosexuals and our lesbians and gays. He rained fire down on that city. And if the Lord destroyed a whole city of fire people because they was homosexuals, why do we think today that the Lord is accepting it or the Lord thinks it's okay? But the fact of the matter is when Lot and his wife and his family, they left out of that Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife still looked back. She turned and she looked back because her heart, her heart still was in that city. She still had love for what was going on. That was going on in that city, the wickedness. She still had some love for that wickedness, right? And the Lord destroyed her for that, right? And the same thing here. This brother, he could have been faithless and turned back, but he kept walking with the Lord. Abraham, right? Read on. This is Hebrews 11 and 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. And that's, that's faith right there. His only son at the time. And the brother was going to offer him up on the, on, the, on, the on the table to sacrifice him. The Lord was trying him to see if he was going to walk with him or not. And, and Abraham was faithful. He put his son up on the altar and was going to sacrifice him. And the Lord told him, no, hold your hand. And then he gave him a ram to offer in his place. But the Lord was just trying him. And the brother, he proved himself. He came out as gold. The Lord tried him in the fire. This brother came out like gold. 
right? Because he was faithful, right? Read on. Of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, right? In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Abraham had, he was a father of many nations. His two biggest sons was Isaac and Ishmael. But the Lord said that promise that passed down from Adam, that promise that passed down to Noah, that passed down to Abraham, is going to pass down to Isaac, right? And then after Isaac, it came to Jacob. And after Jacob, it came to us as a nation of people. You so-called Negroes, people of Hispanic descent, and you of, like, um, of Indian descent, right? That's where that blessing is now, right? And we need to step up and claim these blessings. We need to step up and claim these covenants because nobody else can take it. It's not like the Lord is going to give it to another nation of people, right? Let me get on Deuteronomy 431. that the Lord locked in and we have to claim it. Nobody else could claim it because he never gave it to another nation of people. All right, read what you got. This is Deuteronomy 4 and 31. For the Lord thy power is a merciful power. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. So the covenants and these promises, they're still in effect. The Lord still has respect unto them and he hasn't forgotten them. All right, read on. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee since the day that the Most High created man upon the earth, and ask them from one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is. So the Lord is saying, check out all the nations. And has the Lord ever brought a nation of people through the Red Sea? Has the Lord ever gave these promises and these covenants to any other people? Right, read on. Or hath, or hath been heard like it? Did ever people hear the voice of the Most High speaking out of the midst of the fire? And the brother just brought it out in Exodus 3. When the Lord first came to Moses, he came speaking to him out of the midst of the fire. He didn't do that with any other people. He did that with, with, with the nation of Israel, right? So, so now today, 2015, those same promises, they got passed down. And we, we are the ones that are supposed to be dealing with those promises, right? Read on. Did ever people hear the voice of the Most High speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Right? Or have the Most High say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your power did for you in Egypt before your eyes? So the Lord is saying he hasn't went and got it from another people. He hasn't went and chosen another people to give his covenants to, his promises to, his laws, his commandments, and his statutes. The Lord said, there's nowhere in the Bible where the Lord said, he was going to give that to another people, right? Read on. Unto thee it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is the most high. There is none else besides him. So it was shown to us. The Lord gave us this juice so that we would know that there is only one true power. There is only one true way to serve him, right? Read on. Unto thee it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is power. There is none else besides him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice. Right. That he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Yeah, the, all these things the Lord did for us. He brought us through the fire. He brought us through the schoolmaster. He taught us. He gave us commandments, statutes. He opened up the heavens. He spoke out of the fire. The Lord did all of this. And he said he, he didn't give it to another nation of people. Let me get, um, no, let me get, hold out. Let me get, hold out. And he didn't give it to another nation of people. He gave it to us, right? Read on. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out of his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. So he chose their seed after them. So that same blessing that, 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 that Moses had, the covenant that Moses made, the same covenant, they just keep passing down to their children, right? And we are the children of the prophets, right? Over here. Baruch 4 and 3. Give not thine honor to another. Know the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. So the Lord is saying all these things he gave unto us. The Lord is saying don't give it away. Don't forget our history. Don't forget where we came from. Don't forget our forefathers, what they did. Don't forget the blessings that were passed down to us. Don't forget these things. And don't give them unto another nation of people. Because there is another nation of people that claim to be us, right? Let me get Revelation 3.9. 3 right? If there is a people on the earth that's trying to claim our heritage and our history, and, and, and all our blessings and all our birthrights and saying that, that we're not the people. 
But according to these scriptures, we are the people, right? That the, that these blessings were passed down to. Right? Read what you got. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but who in, do lie. Yeah, who in the earth stand up and say that they're Jewish? Or that they're, 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 they're of the seed of Israel? It's these so-called white people. You see them walking down up in Whaley Avenue in New Haven, Connecticut. You see them up at the edge of the woods. They wear all this black clothes. They got the big white beards and all this stuff. And they try to take our heritage. They try to take our culture, but they don't fit the, the scriptures. They don't fit the description. The Lord said that his people were going to go into captivity and that we were going to get beat down. The Jewish people are rich. They own almost all the businesses, the federal banks and all this stuff. They don't fit the description. And there's no way that the Jews are going to leave Israel being having color to them. And then there it is, like 400 years later, now they white. That, that's, those are lies, right? Read that again. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them up of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Yeah, the so-called Negroes, we don't call ourselves Jews. Just today, brothers are starting to get this wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we're, we're starting to pick back up our heritage, but the people that call themselves the, Jew, the Jews in the earth today is the so-called white men, right? Read on. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. But the Lord's saying he's going to flip it. He's going to flip the captivity, right? We're not going to be in captivity no more. Like a lot of people say, we, they, they see the writing on the wall. They see that America's doing bad, the economy's falling. The army spread out all over the world because they're trying to fight everybody else's wars. So they see that America's falling, but most people, they think China is going to be like the next government to come up with rule. But what we're professing is that Christ is going to set up his kingdom. And in, in his kingdom, he said he's going to have these people that lie, they're going to worship before our feet, right? Pick it back up where you had over here, Rob. This is Deuteronomy 4 and 38. To drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. And again, we mentioned it before, but this is how we got the promised land. We, we, we got it through war, with the Lord fighting for us, and we slayed off the Canaanites, and we took their land, right? Read on. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart. Know, know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is the most high in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Right, so that kills all the religions. Like I was doing a lesson on religion before, there's over 4,000 religions in the earth. And like the first brother that came up, it's like it's only, it's only one right way. Everybody else is wrong, right? It's not 4,000 ways to come to the Lord. There's only one way, according to these scriptures, right? Read on. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy power giveth thee forever. Yeah, it's going to go well with those brothers back in that time, and it's going to go well with us in this time if we hold on to the commandments and the statutes of the Lord, right? Come back to what you was holding. The, uh, the Ecclesiasticus 44. You finished the Hebrews, right? Read the Ecclesiasticus 44. Let me get that 19 to 23. Over here, let me get um, Genesis 21, 8 to 12. Read what you got out. Ecclesiasticus 44, 19. Abraham was a great father of many people, and glory was there none like unto him. Yeah, because our brother was big with faith. He believed. That's what anybody that comes to the Lord, the first thing is you got to believe. And Abraham is that example of belief. Right? Read on. Who kept the law of the Most High. It was in covenant with him. Yeah, he made promises with that brother. He made promises with Abraham. And those promises... One of those promises is that all nations of the earth was going to be blessed through Abraham. Right? Read on. He established the covenant in, in his flesh. Excuse me. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. Yeah, that's when it's talking about Isaac. When the Lord proved him to offer up his only begotten son. Right? He never did. He, he was about to do it because he believed that the Lord would have been able to raise him up if he did it or whatnot. He believed in the Lord. He would have, he would have gave up his own son for the Lord. Right? Read on. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he will bless bless the nations in his seed and that he would excuse me and that he would multiply him as the dust and exalt his seed 
as the stars it calls us to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. Yeah, so the Lord said that the, his blessing to bless all the other nations was going to pass out to his seed, to his children, right? Who we are, who we profess ourselves to be, Hebrew Israelites, right? Read on. Ecclesiasticus 44 and 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise. Yeah, so that same promise, that same covenant with, with Abraham, he reestablished it with Isaac, right? Read on. For Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant. So, at, so when Isaac was in the earth, all men were going to be blessed through Isaac, right? Through all men, right? Read on. He made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He, excuse me, he acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him inheritance and divided his portions among the 12 tribes that he partnered. Yeah, so it went from Isaac and then it fell on the head of Jacob. And then it went down to Jacob's 12, 12, 12 children, that same blessing, that same covenant, that same promise that through them, all the other nations of the earth are going to be blessed, right? Did I give you something? Read what you got out. Genesis 21 and 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Yeah, so the brother, he made a, he threw a celebration the day that his, his child was weaned. Wean is when he stopped drinking the bottle, like around three years old, right? Read on. And Sarah saw the son of, of Hagar, excuse me, the breast, when he's off the breast. That's when the child is weaned, when he stopped sucking the breast, around three years old, right? Read on. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Yeah, so Isaac, he's having a party and he's celebrating because he got his firstborn child. And here it is, the, um, the bond woman, she's mocking and, and making jokes and, and cutting on the brother. Right? As the party's going on, as the feast is going on, right? Read on. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, so even the Lord, with Isaac. So the Lord said, you know, cast out the bondwoman, because the bondwoman wasn't the real wife. She was like the, um, the, the concubine. And the Lord said that her child wasn't going to get the blessing, but the, the blessing was going to come down to Isaac, right? Read on. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of that bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her, bark, hearken unto her voice. Right. For an Isaac shall thy seed be called. Yeah, so Abraham, he, he wasn't happy about it. He felt kind of bad about it, but it's the Lord's will. It's not what Abraham wanted, so to speak. This is what the Lord chose to happen, that this blessing was going to pass down to Isaac, right? Pick it up, what you got, Doc? Romans 9 and 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and, and the service of the Most High and the promises. That's who the Israelites are. The Israelites are the brothers and sisters that descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That got the adoption, they got the glory, they got the covenants, and they got the law and the commandments and the statutes from the Most High. That's who the Israelites are. The Lord didn't do that with any other people. Right? Read on. Whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? And as concerning the flesh, Christ, he came as an Israelite, in the flesh of an Israelite, looking like a so-called Negro, right, from the tribe of Judah. Read on. Who is over all the Most High blessed forever. Amen. Right? Not as though the word of the Most High had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Yeah, because some brothers is, is wicked. Not everybody that's in Israel is Israel. I mean, the Lord will take a righteous Gentile over a wicked Israelite any day. So don't think that just because you're an Israelite, just because you come through the, 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 the children, the seed of Abraham and Isaac and the prophets, that you automatically is just blessed and you're going to be right. You still got to do the works. You still got to believe. You still got to walk in the ways of the Lord, just like these brothers walk, walked in the ways of the Lord before us, right? Our forefathers, right? Read on. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's good. So again, Abraham had many children. His two popular ones was Isaac and Ishmael, but through the Lord, the blessing that came down to Isaac, right? And it passed down to Jacob. Read the... Um, Read the second Ezra 3 and 16 again. Go ahead. Romans 9 and 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High. 
but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yeah, not the children of the flesh, not the, the carnal ones, not the Gentile nations, but the, the children of the promise. They're the ones that's counted as the seed, or counted as the children, or counted, counted as the offspring, right? Read on. Hmm? It's the second answer, it's 3 and 16. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. Stop. So again, we see it. We see that it passed down. It passed down from Abraham, it passed down to, um, to um, Isaac, it passed down to Jacob, right? And, 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 and now it's amongst us as a nation of people. And again, we have to come and claim these things. We gotta come and take these covenants. We gotta come and take these promises because nobody else qualifies for it. Nobody else could do it. The earth is never gonna be lifted back up into a righteous state or into a spiritual world until the nation of Israel stand back up. Until the nation of Israel stand back up, right? Read what you got. Genesis 32 and 24. Now we're, gonna, we're bringing out some scriptures about Jacob now, right? how Jacob, he was locked in also by the Lord, right? Read on. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with them until the breaking of, of the day. So this brother was fighting for a long time. He was fighting until the breaking of the day, until daylight was about to come out. Right, read on. And when he saw that he prevailed not against them, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of, of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with them. So these guys was fighting for so long that the, the sun was about to come up. And the brother, he saw that he wasn't going to win, so he touched him on his hip, and his hip came out of place, right? Keep going. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. So, so this, is what, this is what Jacob said to the man he was wrestling with. I'm not going to let you go until you give me a blessing, right? Read on. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall, excuse me, and he said, that name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. That's why we call ourselves Israelites. That's why we call ourselves the children of Israel, because our forefather's name was Jacob. He wrestled with an angel until the break of the day, and the angel couldn't win against him. So the angel blessed him, and he changed his name into Israel. Because Israel, it means a prince of power, Yasha Allah. It means to have power with men and to have power with the Most High, right? We're, the, we're, the, we're that bridge. We're that bridge between men and the Most High, right? Read on. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, hast thou power with the Most High, and with men, and hast prevailed. Read on. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Right. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen the Most High's face to face, and my life is preserved. Yeah, so he named the place of where they was fighting with till the daybreak, Penuel, right? Because he, he said he saw the face of the Most High, but we saw the face of an angel, right? Because again, he wrestled with the angel, he prevailed, and he got the blessing. And his name was changed from Jacob to Israel, right? So that's why we call ourselves Israelites, because of our forefather Jacob, right? Read on. Genesis 32 and 31, and as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Right. His thigh was jacked up because while he was fighting with the angel, the angel had knocked his thigh out of place, right? Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh until this day. So it was a custom that came out amongst our people that we wouldn't eat, like when we ate any bones, we wouldn't eat the thigh in our respect to our forefather Jacob, right? But over here, pick it up, uh, let me get Genesis. Like I said, we're just showing how this, this blessing and these covenants and these promises are still on the earth. The Lord never forsook us as a people, right? So we're checking out the history, right? And this is how Jacob got his name changed and got, and got his blessing, right? Read on. Hosea 12 and 3. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with the Most High. Right. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. Right. He wept and made.
gave supplication unto him. Right, good. He found, he found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. So again, this is another blessing that came down on Jacob, because when he was in the womb with his brother Esau, he wrestled, and he came, and he prevailed. Even in the womb, before he was born, he prevailed. Just like he prevailed against the angel when he fought. And the Lord blessed him for this, right? Read that again. Four verses. This is Hosea 12 and 3. He took his brother by the hill in the womb. And by his strength, he had power with the Most High. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake, unto, he spake with us, even the Lord of hosts. The, the Lord is his memorial. So again, this brother was blessed from the Lord from the womb before he even came out. Because just like he prevailed against the angel, he prevailed in the womb against his brother. His brother was blessed before he was born. Our forefather Jacob, right? Read what you got. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art in the holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And again, that's that same blessing that Abraham had that's passing down to the children of Israel, right? Read on. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fuels of all people. Yeah, so it's not like the Lord chose us just because it was a lot of us and there were so many of us and we were so popular and we were so, so great a nation. The Lord picked us because we was the fewest, because he had love towards us, right? And he knew he could work through us, right? Read on. Deuteronomy 7 and 8. But because the Lord loved you, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, that the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So the Lord is saying he's doing all this because of his oath. Because of all the promises he made with Abraham, all the promises he made with Isaac, all the promises he did with Jacob, those things are still in effect. Those promises are still on the earth. It's just we, as a nation of people, we don't know who we are. So we can't come and, and, and lift ourselves up to that nation, that, to that level where we used to be. Because the Lord would have us to be above all the nations of the earth because we, we got these laws. It's not because it's not we're so strong. It's because we got you know so much strength or we got good looks and nothing like that. It's because he gave us these, this wisdom, this knowledge, and understanding. This is what, what's lifting us up above the other nations. This is how these other nations are getting blessed. Right? Read on. Deuteronomy 79. Know that therefore that the Lord thy power, he is the most high. Right. The faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Yeah, he's the power that, he's the power of mercy. He's a power that keep it covenants. He's not like a man that say, I'm going to be there for you at so-and-so time and don't show up. The Lord, he don't deal like that. He's a power of mercy, and he's a power that keepeth his covenants. And his covenant is still with you so-called Negroes, you so-called Hispanics, you so-called people of, of Indian descent that went through the hard captivity and bondage that the Lord put you in because you turned your back on them and started following other powers and other nations in their ways and forgot who you are and what you should be doing in the earth, right? Read on one more verse. Deuteronomy 7 and 10. And repay of them that hang him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. So like the brother was bringing out in his, his lesson, it's the goodness and severity that comes from the Lord. The Lord, he's terrible, he's great, and he's terrible. He's going to be great to those that, that's righteous, but he's going to be terrible to those who's wicked. Just like he said, he keep his mercy, he keep his covenants and his promises unto a thousand generations for those that hate him. The people that hate him, that hate this word, that, de that despise the truth, and that want to live a life of lie in these things, the Lord said he's going to repay them to their face because they hate him, right? Pick up what you got, out. Exodus 19 and 3. And Moses went up unto the Most High, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Yeah, so in Moses' time, Moses was the one that the Lord had his promise and made his covenant with Moses. But Moses said, we're supposed to teach these things to our brothers and sisters, to our people of our nation first. And all the other nations that come into that light, that want to that want to come into that light and hearken unto the truth, they can come in also, right? Read on. 
Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, right. and brought you unto myself. Right. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. So there go the prerequisites, there go the parameters. If we want to be lifted up as a nation of people, if we want to get out of the ghettos, if we want to, if we want to be successful, if we want to stop being sh shot down by the police because, uh, because of us walking around foolish, we got to learn. We got to learn our heritage. We got to learn these commandments. We got to learn these statutes and these laws that the Lord set up because he gave it to us for our, our good. It's not like the Lord is trying to beat us down with these things. All these commandments he gives us, they can only prolong your life, right? It can only make you live, right? Read on. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Read that six verse. Not fair, read five verse. This is Exodus 19 and 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. See, but nobody else could keep the covenant because the covenant wasn't given to any other people. So it's you, you people, we got to remember who we are and rise up and, and take our position again, right? Right? We got to stand up in these commandments and these laws and the statutes and put on and, and, and walk with them uprightly so all the other nations can be blessed too. Read on. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. And that's what the Lord is looking for us. He doesn't want us to be a kingdom of gangsters, a kingdom of deadbeat dads, a kingdom of uh, fornicators, a kingdom of liars a kingdom of evildoers. He wants us to be a nation of kings and priests to lead the charge for everybody else, to lead the charge of righteousness. Right? What was that, six? And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right? That's good. That's good. That's good. So that's what the Lord wants us to be, a kingdom, a, a nation of kings and priests, not a bunch of um, deadbeat dads and and liars and you know corrupt people the lord is looking for righteousness and he's looking for us to lead the charge because the scriptures say it says unto the jew first and then unto the gentile right what you holding over here come back to the um second essence read 3 and 16 again get me um oh matter of fact um yeah do that get me um give me psalms 105 let me get it from 6 to 15. right so you got that right you got that but also get me um genesis 25 27. Yeah, the Lord wanted to be a nation, a whole nation of kings and priests to, 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 to lead the charge of righteousness, right? So everybody else could see the commandments and the laws and statutes that, that at one point in time was only amongst us as a people, right? And the other nations didn't know about them, right? Read on. Psalms. Psalms 105 and 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, right? Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Again, no Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those blessings were passed down, right? Read on. He is the Lord, our power. His judgments are, excuse me, his judgments are in all the earth. His judgments are in the earth every day, but people whose minds is blocked off by worldliness, by, by, by vanity, by carnal things. They can't see what the Lord is doing. They don't even understand it. They can't even see the Lord, right? Read on. He had remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Yeah, that same covenant, that same promise with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he's remembered them. He remembered it. He never forgot us. We forgot him. That's the problem. We turned our backs on him. And that's why we're still here in America. We're still being killed. I mean, we're still doing bad, you know, second-class citizens, right? And it's never going to change until we, we change our mindset, until we, we start be stop believing in the philosophies of all the other nations and come back to our heritage and come back to what the Lord set up for us from, from, the, from the beginning, right? You know what? Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. Right, and he confirmed that same covenant, that same promise with Jacob. And, and, it, and it became a law amongst us. It became a way to walk, right? Because this Bible is full of laws. Do, don't do this, do that. This is good, this is evil, right? We need that, we need that guidance, we need that counsel, right? Read on. It's an Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, 
unto thee, and will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. Right, again, that's when we, we took the promised land from the Canaanites, and, and, and then it became Jerusalem, right? Read on. Verse 12, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. Yeah, because it's the Lord that fought with us. It wasn't our own strength. It was a spiritual zone, the way we was able to come into another people's land and displace them and take and kill them off and take them out of their land to, and take their land that was flowing with milk and that was flowing with honey. Right, read on. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. Yeah, because before we came into the land of Canaan, before we came into that land of Israel, we were nomads. We used to dwell in tents, you know, traveling through the wilderness, right? That's why he said how we went from one nation to another nation, and the Lord was protecting us. He was guiding us. He was with us, right? Read on. He suffered no man to do them wrong, right? Yay. He refused. And 14, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Yeah, that's the protection. That's the blessing that he gave us. Even with the Egyptians and the kings and the pharaohs and all these kings that came against us, they couldn't do us no harm because the Lord was with us, right? He was for us. Read on. Say, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's the blessing, man. That's why we can even come out here today with no fear and just profess the word of the Lord because we know... This is all the work of the Lord. This is his judgments that are in the earth. And it's the Lord that got out, that's given us protection. So we have no fear to come out and, and speak the word of the Lord. Right? Pick it back up over here. This is Genesis give 25. The, give me the second Ezra. Second Ezra is 3 and 16. And unto him thou gave us Isaac, and unto Isaac, also thou gave us Jacob and Esau. He's talking about Abraham. Abraham, he gave Isaac, he gave unto him Isaac, and he gave unto him Jacob and Esau. Right? Read on. And unto Isaac also thou gave us Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. So again, Jacob, excuse me, Isaac, he had more than one child. He had Esau and he had Jacob. But the blessing, the covenant, the promises, all those things, it didn't get passed down to Esau. It got passed down to Jacob, right? Well, let's read where Esau started off. Pick up the, uh, the scripture on Esau. This is Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy vows. Hold on, hold on. Take it. Let's go. Let's go. This is Genesis 25 and 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And this is what the brother was saying before in his lesson, that he was a virgin until 40, until he had his first wife right here, right? There's not too many people on the earth that can hold himself that long like this brother.